Okay, guys, Rachel gave me something to do instead of being annoying to her. Uh, so I'm doing tires on a Ford Fusion 4. And uh, I had some thoughts about tire pressure, so I want to share it with you. So let's get you, let's get you flipped here, and maybe we can get you watching the work here without my phone tumbling. Ah, it's almost good. Ah, all right, so it's a little better. So tire pressure. On all the vehicles today, if your car hasn't been molested by a body shop, should have an ID label on the driver's front door somewhere that says what your tire pressure should be. Um, and if your tire pressure is not within that spec, you're gonna get an annoying tire light, like Rachel buzzing in my ear like a gnat or a fly. Like, get away from me. Hold on, come over here. Look. That's Listen. like you. Look. What? Like my little tire machine holder pharmacist cell phone. So as I'm sitting over here in my crazy mind, you know that. <laughs> talking about tire pressure and tires, how many more benefits it is to have more tire pressure than what your vehicle says on the door jam. So you give me one and then I'll give you some more. One reason why you should run higher tire pressure than what your vehicle says on the door. Just give me one from, from a woman who works with men all day long. One benefit. The climate change changes your tire pressure a lot, so it'll we'll keep it cold. So temperature related, that's a good one, Rachel. Bing, 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 bing. You receive a prize. There'll be Dustin in a little pop-up cake in a tutu. I'm done. So that's one. So Rachel said atmospheric pressure and environmental changes, correct. So if you set it at minimum, when you wake up in the morning and start your car on a cold day, you're gonna have a pesky tire light until you drive down the street, your tires get some heat in them, some friction, and the tire pressure will go up, hopefully enough to turn the tire light out. In girls' terminology, it's like holding five pounds of water weight. Holding five pounds of water weight. So that would be one benefit of running higher than what the door says. The second benefit would be fuel economy. All right, so a tire that's firmer, um, or has more, has less rolling resistance, meaning lower tire pressure increases rolling resistance, meaning it's harder to push the wheelbarrow on a low or flat tire. Uh, an overinflated, not saying super overinflated, but above what the manufacturer specs are, will give the vehicle easier rolling re resistance, hence better miles per gallon, uh, a lot more fuel efficiency in most cases, and if you do some research, you'll, you'll see that. So that was two, right? Give me a third one. So, ooh, Rachel brought up a good one. So, an, a, a well overinflated tire. So, I'm going to give you an example. So, normally inflated, over and too overinflated. So, the tire will actually raise up and it'll start riding on the tread. So, less traction, overinflated. Underinflated will give you more traction to a certain point, especially in off road snow and, and icy conditions. So, not really. So, overinflated is your best for miles per gallon. Underinflated kills your miles per gallon. And then if your tires are underinflated and then you have four passengers in your car and groceries and all this, it just amplifies how much, how less efficient your vehicle be, will become. So another benefit is less, less suspension issues. So it's gonna be more firmer of a ride, but then it's not low enough to where the tire pressure, and we're saying driving around on low, underinflated tires, destroys your suspension, destroys your rims, uh, makes the vehicle handle uh, unsafely. So imagine driving around on four low tires or whatever, driving around on low tire pressure, uh, overheats the rubber in your tires and can cause a blowout. Um, so the benefits of driving with tires that are properly inflated all the time are over. Miles for this car? I texted it to you. Driving with overinflated tires has way more benefits than driving with underinflated tires. And then some people don't care about their tire monitor systems, if they work, if they don't work. That is your best indicator on what's going on where the rubber meets the pavement, which is one of your biggest safety things. So you definitely need to know if you have a low tire light. Um, and sometimes it just changes or, you know, it doesn't change, but you need someone to diagnose why your tire light is on. And then, you know, if your tire light's on and you know your tires were holding air, 
that's only a temporary thing because you don't really have any indicators unless you have special tools that are on your tire saying with the little caps that says green or red or the tire monitor system's working properly. Um, and it is annoying. I, for one, like to know what my tire pressure is. And I can see a tire and say, hey, that tire is definitely underinflated or getting close to being underinflated um, just based on my experience. How do you tell? So if you take a tire and a perfect circle, right, and then take it and squat it just a little bit in the circle at the bottom, that's your traction point of the tire, the contact patch. So the smaller the contact patch, right, the more tire pressure it's in the car. The larger the contact patch is the less tire pressure in the car. So on dry conditions, a bigger contact patch gives you more traction, but there's more drag on the vehicle. So way more benefits than running higher tire pressure. And I said the biggest uh, thing is how it uh, improves your miles per gallon. I hope this helps somebody uh, out. And then you can watch me spoon this tire. So if I'm not spooning at home, I'm spooning at work, baby. Alright, thanks for watching.